What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We are headed back to Moto Europa. They have yet another bike for us to ride. Yesterday, I posted on my Instagram story and see which bike you guys wanted to see me ride next. The options were a Street Fighter V4S, a KTM Super Duke Kawasaki Z400, or a Ducati Diablo. We had over 15,000 votes on this poll. There have been two that have been in the lead. So what I've decided to do, we're going to head to the dealership. We're going to flip a coin to determine which bike we're going to ride today. So let's get cracking. I almost forgot to mention, we got a, a new little rear seat cover. The install was a pain. We're here. How you guys doing? You guys got a lot of tires, huh? Y'all need some help? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when are you guys getting sport bike tires? Yeah, I have both. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about trying super courses, but yeah. I tried some, I think they were Rosso 3s yeah. on my 899, yeah. and I hated them. Really? Yeah, I didn't like them. Definitely rider error. You have gotten Rider error. <laughs> Probably was. I don't know what bike I'm taking. We're going to do a coin flip. It was literally 24, 25, 27, 44. Dude. Damn, it's close. Yeah. 400's got a point. There's one that I prefer to take out because the weather sucks. So here's the deal. Two were in the lead every time I check. It's either the Street Fighter V4S or the Kawasaki 400. Tell the people what's heads. We're going to go with old Abe. It was Kawasaki today. Statue of Liberty. 210 horsepower of Street Fighter V4 goodness. <laughs> Oh. oh, you're going on a cowie, baby. Okay. All right, so tell me about this thing. What's the deal? <laughs> Looks like it's got a lot of nice upgrades with the sliders and the exhaust. How much is it? No, we're asking 4,800 for it. 4,800. Mileage limit? Time limit? Okay. Scale of dumb shit that I can do on it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is weird. This is a Kawasaki Z400. Today, we are going to determine if I recommend this bike for you to start on. Now, in my experience, the closest thing that I have to this, Gixxer 250. I owned it for about 30 days. That did not end up panning out the way that I wanted it to. But anyway, back to the Kawasaki. This seat is not big enough for me. I'm like on the bumpiness. If you're a small person and looking for a motorcycle, I think this would be a great option. Fun facts about this thing. Leo Vince exhaust, frame sliders on the side and axle sliders both on the back and on the front. Aftermarket levers that are adjustable. This bike is specced out perfectly for someone to start on. We have mirrors. The rev limit goes all the way up to 12,000. That's enough yapping. Let's get this thing started and hear what it sounds like. That exhaust is doing a lot for this bike, I will say. Big fan of the Leo Vince exhaust. Never heard it before. Let's get this thing out on the street. Okay. All right, we got to give it the parking lot test. Okay. Well, she passed for sure. First modification that I would do to this motorcycle if I bought it today is tank pads because every time I tap the brake my knees are on this painted surface so there's not much grip there and instead of stopping with the bike my body crushes itself on the gas tank look at how bent my knee is here this is definitely a great bike for small people <laughs> This thing's got some great torque. Starter bikes, lower CC bikes. What they don't have in horsepower, they make up for in torque. You can still have a ton of fun on this thing. When dodging potholes, you must make sound effects. Helps with the handling of the motorcycle. The shifting is extremely smooth. Positive neutral finder. 100% of the time, works every time. That's quite impressive from the engineers. 
golf clap for you. These things are great on gas mileage. I'd consider getting one of these as a daily just for the gas mileage. <laughs> right in the nuggets. Oh, that hurt. If you're a guy, get tank pads. Hey, you can't park there. Let's see how she gets down. stock sound of these motorcycles the sound that you're hearing is a million times better all righty guys quick shout out to Moto Europa this is now the third time they've let me borrow a motorcycle to show you guys what it's like to ride so if you're looking for a new or used motorcycle the link is down in the description for Moto Europa check them out take a look at what they have they're actually selling this bike that I'm riding right now thank you very much even though the weather is not beautiful, today feels amazing. I love being able to come out here and just ride something different. All right, I have noticed one thing about the bike that I don't like so far, the suspension. Every time I go over a bump, man, this thing is, oof, it is an ouchie and a half. So the gears shift really well. Let's see if it's got a, ooh, it is equipped with a quick shifter. Quick shifters are cool. I do like quick shifters. I honestly just forget to use it. Like, I'm so used to not having a quick shifter that my default is using the clutch. Like, if I'm just casual riding, I probably won't use my quick shifter because in a lot of cases, there's, there's very specific um, conditions, such as like you have to be rolling off the throttle, you have to be above or below a certain RPM for it to go up or down. And sometimes I just can't remember all of those conditions, so it's quicker and easier for me to just remember to use the clutch. <laughs> About that. About that. When we're talking about like what makes a good starter bike, how can you minimize the risk while maximizing the amount of time someone's gonna be able to spend with the same bike. I would say this bike is a little high on torque. The throttle's pretty responsive. It wasn't at first. I think once you run it up to about 3000 RPM, the power starts to kick in a lot better. Um, the first 3000 RPM, it's pretty dead. Something you kind of want out of a beginner bike. The clutch is very forgiving, is very soft. I can move the motorcycle forward without using any throttle input, which is a great exercise to practice in my opinion. That's the hardest thing to do when you're learning how to ride, is just get the bike going from a stop. It's not if you're going to drop your bike, it's when. I've dropped a bike before, I've dropped a couple bikes actually. I've dropped one of the Groms, I just dropped it in the garage. I also dropped my 899 Panigale that I had. There was a rider in front of me who had just crashed, and I came to a stop. Uh, safely. I was sent up to a fire station who didn't have any cell phone service to try and get a hold of someone so that they could send an ambulance out. In that situation I was so caught up in the moment, caught up in the emotions, that I forgot that I was pulling onto a gravel driveway. I grabbed too much front brake, the bike just went straight down, landed on my foot, not a good time, the shift lever broke off. 
Another thing great about this particular bike is this is an ABS model. So it has an anti-lock braking system. For someone who's starting out on motorcycles, that is a wonderful thing to have. Because if you grab too much front brake, or more commonly, grab too much rear brake, and lock up that rear tire, the ABS is gonna kick in and take control. Now, for some of our more experienced riders, what you may hear is they don't like ABS systems. The reason for that is when you're doing some shenanigans on a motorcycle, the ABS system can become a real problem. What happens is the ABS system kicks in when you don't want it to, so it makes the bike more unpredictable. That's why you may hear ABS is not a good thing to have, but I promise you, if you're starting out, you want ABS for sure. We look amazing, I must say. Oh, I need to talk about the wind on the highway. Dude, that wind was so bad. I've heard from people who ride naked bikes that the wind, because there's nothing right here, the wind just hits you square in the chest and tries to rip you off the bike. Now, I wasn't even going that fast. I think I topped out at like 106. I wouldn't think that the windscreen on the sport bikes would do that much, but holy, it makes a difference. I hate the Tesla braking systems, dude. Get me away from this toaster! I hate you. All right, I think it's time to get out of this traffic and go grab a cup of coffee. So I will see you guys when we get there. Hi, large iced vanilla latte. Thank you. Thank you. It rained a little bit. Careful Spongebob. Careful Spongebob. Well, good. This is for sure the first time that I'm riding a Kawasaki. So I've never had any experience with their positive neutral finder. Which, if you're new to motorcycles, I'm sure you see it all the time. People making, hi buddy! Oh, we got a nod. People making videos all the time about how difficult it is to find neutral. Well, Kawasaki decided that they were going to help solve this problem. They came up with something called Positive Neutral Finder. Now, I'm not 100% certain on how it works, but what I can tell you is that it does work because it's a lot easier to find neutral on this bike than it is to find neutral on other bikes that I've ridden in the past. You got me going up, down, up, down, left, right, 360, no scope for the final neutral shift. A good beginner bike is a bike that allows you to rid yourself of distractions and make it easier for you to learn the basics of riding a motorcycle on the street. This bike with the positive neutral finder does that. We're back at the garage. I posted a story on my Instagram page to see if you guys have any questions for me while I have the bike in my possession. Question number one from the story. How many cc's does this bike have? Well, it's a Kawasaki Z400. That's an easy one to answer. It has 400 cc. What's the top speed on this thing? In this ride today, I was able to get it up to 106. It depends on how much you weigh. Maybe like 115 if you're a really small person. I set out to answer one very simple question. Can I recommend this as a bike to start on? My answer to that question is yes. You won't necessarily get tired of the bike quickly. I do have a few minor things that I don't like about the bike. For me, riding this today was pretty uncomfortable. If you're closer to 100 pounds, I think this is a great bike for you. I think they designed this specific model to be better for smaller people. As I said, the seat height is pretty short. It's pretty low to the ground. Everything else on this, I've had an absolute blast riding it around. Let's head back to the dealership and give this thing back to Chris. My butt hurts. If it's like, <laughs> like the beaded seats. <laughs> it seems like it's meant for shorter people, for sure. Oh yeah, it is. It's just straight up beginner. It seems like you, 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 yeah. What did I do? Tired and you had some fun. Well, that's what we're here to do. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.